taking the derivative of an integral here, what theorem are we using? Yeah, fundamental theorem of calculus part one by our book. Other books will reorder them in different ways. So you're taking the derivative of an integral. Essentially, the hand-waving, very simple version of a simple explanation of how this works is uh, when you take the derivative of an integral, where, where do you end up? At the function itself. Exactly. So what is the derivative of this going to be? It's just going to be the square root of 1 plus x squared. There it is. Right there. That's it. Now, let's say I change this a little bit. Hold on. Let's say I change this to this. What about d dx of the integral from 2 to x squared of the square root of 1 plus t squared dt? What's that going to be? 1 plus x to the fourth times what? Times 2x. Exactly. Right? Uh, uh. What happens if I did this? What about d dx of, let's say it went from x to x squared of the square root of 1 plus t squared dt? What do I have to do? You have to, you're, you're going to turn it into a subtraction, but what do you, you're going to break it up, because what's the problem? You need a constant, right? You can't have the variable, you need a constant. So it doesn't matter what constant you pick. No, no. This is the same thing as doing d dx of the integral from x to 0 of the square root of 1 plus t squared dt, plus the integral from 0 to x squared of 1 plus t squared dt. Does that make sense? Kind of, maybe. And then what's the problem with the first one? It goes from x to 0. You want it to go from 0 to x. So you end up with d dx of negative 0 to x of this plus the same thing right here. I don't know what I'm going to say. <coughs> this, same thing. So what is this going to end up equaling? The square root, negative the square root of 1 plus x squared plus what? 2x times the square root of 1 plus x to the fourth. There you go. So that's how you can mutate it a little bit. Both of these forms, the one I just, just stated, could appear on the AP desk, absolutely. So we have two functions here. We have this one right here, which is y equals x squared. And then we have the other function right here. Which one's that? x equals y squared. Good. So the enclosed area... Excellent, is right there. There's our enclosed area, and you spun it around x equals negative 1. You spun it around x equals negative 1. So just to blow this up a little bit, we end up with, there's, well, that's a little two curves right there. You have x equals y squared like this, and then you have y equals x squared like this. So your region is this one right here. There's your enclosed region right there. So then you drew one horizontal line, which I liked, like that across both and the reflection, and then you went back like that. So there's your slice being rotated, correct? Mm -hmm. The challenge now is that you need to write equations for the big radius and the little radius. The formula you're dealing with is pi from, you know, we'll do the limits later, big R squared minus little r squared. First question to answer is, are we integrating with respect to x or y? Why? Because the washer is perpendicular to the y-axis, so this thing is dy. What's the lower bound of this integral going to be? What's the lowest y value? Zero, and the upper one is one. So you have some of it. Now you see big R and little r. The challenge is this is not going around an axis. Big R goes from here all the way to the red. It goes from x equals negative one, so from negative one all the way to the red function. That's your big R. Now do you want this in terms of x or y? Y. You want it in terms of Y. This point, sorry, so we're going to this point right there. That point right there is going to be X comma Y squared, right? But you want everything in terms of Y. What does Y equal right here? Square root of X. And also X is, sorry, this was not written correctly. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this would be Y squared comma Y. There you go. That's what we wanted right there. Get this again. Y equals X squared. So if you wanted to write this in terms of just in terms of x, you have x comma y here, right? But what does y equal? What does y equal? Y equals x squared. But we don't want it in terms of x. What do we want in terms of? Y. Want in terms of y. We know that x squared is equal to y. So what does x equal? X is equal to the square root of y. So what can we write this as? Instead of x, we write it as square root of y comma y. So if 
if you want horizontal distance, the horizontal distance a point is from the y-axis is known as the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate is the distance from the y-axis. The y-coordinate is the distance from the x-axis. Now, we're not measuring the distance from the point to the y-axis. We're going from the point to what? To negative 1. So are we going further or less far? Further. How much further are we going? 1 further. We're subtracting negative 1. So big R, what is big R going to equal here? The square root of y minus what? Negative 1. If you want the distance between two things, if you go from A to B, what's the distance from A to B? B minus A. Right? We're going from square root of y to negative 1. How do you find the distance between those two things? You subtract them. And in this case, we're subtracting negative 1. Subtracting negative 1 is the same thing as adding 1. So big R in this case is root y plus 1. But what about little r? Little r goes to which point? That point right there. What's that point right there? We need it in terms of y. So instead of x, y, what's it going to be? y squared. Exactly. So what's little r going to be? y squared minus negative 1. The axis is still negative 1. It didn't change. So we plug this all in. We end up with pi times from 0 to 1 of the square root of y plus 1 squared minus y squared plus 1 squared dy. Now it seems a little weird. y squared is generally thought of as being bigger than the square root of y, but we're between 0 and 1. When you're between 0 and 1, what's bigger? Square root of y or y squared? Square root of y is bigger. So if you want that logic, iron it. Okay, so what do we think here, kids? Okay, what do we think? I like the picture. Okay, so is it 1 to 3? Yep, it's dx. I like this. So what did you do? You just did it as kids. He Shoy Yingwen, come on. Or just not talk. Um, he just broke it up into two integrals, which is fine. You could combine them and do the big R squared minus the little r squared and do two of them. That's fine. I mean, what is this? This right here is just a volume of a cylinder of radius what? One. one. Pi R squared from one to three. Okay. So you multiplied it out first. Right? That's good. I like that. You have this right here. Um, I have, uh, oh, you're doing out the integral right there? Okay, let's yeah. finish it then. That's good. That's good. That's good. Look at this. So is x plus 2 ln x plus what? Uh, minus x. Yeah, minus x, minus x to the negative 1, like that. From 1 to 3. From 1 to 3. Yeah. And why is that 0 right there in the other one? Where? That's oh, 0. That's well, it's not 0. What is it? One. No, what's the one. antiderivative? It's x. It's x from 1 to 3. So what is that one going to be? It's going to be minus pi times what? 2. Right, exactly. So then you see to evaluate this thing and get a final answer. Are we okay with this so far? Does this look doable? Yeah. I pulled the pi out. You pulled the pi out? That's fine. Yeah, so you end up with... Oh, sorry. Yep, yep, it happens, it happens, it happens. Hold on. Okay, so you end up with... So you pulled out a pi. Let's just jump out of here. Pi times... 3 plus 2 ln 3 minus 1 third minus 2, right? Yeah, but then you have to, yeah, and then you subtract. Oh, we haven't subtracted the 1 yet. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's that minus 1 minus 2 ln of 1 minus 1, right? You're subtracting a negative, so it's plus. You're absolutely right, yeah. And then it's minus what? 2 if I put the brackets there. Yeah, yeah. So you just got to make sure you deal with all the fractions. What's one thing that's nice is that this right here, what's that? That's just 0, right? Then you have minus 1 and plus 1. So right here, it's ended with pi times 2 ln 3, which is great, uh, plus 8 over 3 minus uh, 6 over 3. That's just the 2 right there. So it ended up with pi times, pull out a 2, we get ln 3. Oh, my minus or plus what? A third. Third. I'm just factoring out. That's just the answer you generally see. They like to factor things out on that can.